we can also use our continuity properties to talk about continuity of piecewise defined functions like we have here. So we are going to locate all points of discontinuity for the function f of x, and f of x is defined by x squared if x is less than or equal to 1, and it's defined by 2x if x is greater than 1. The first thing I want to do is look at the individual pieces of this piecewise function. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, all right, here in this case, we've got x squared. What type of function is x squared? Well, in this case, it's a polynomial. We said polynomials are continuous everywhere. So everywhere that x squared is defined, it must be continuous. So that's good for us. We don't have any points of discontinuity there. I want to look then at all of the other pieces too. So in this case, the only other piece I have is 2x. What type of function is 2x? In this case, it's a polynomial, which means, again, that it is continuous everywhere. So this seems like pretty good news for us. What this tells me is that this function is continuous everywhere that x squared is defined and I should say mm, with an asterisk here it's almost defined every or it's continuous almost everywhere that x squared is defined and almost everywhere that 2x is defined the problem that we're going to kind of run into now or the one last thing we need to check is where is this function changing gears where is it changing how it's defined. And here, if I look at it, it's changing gears at x equals 1. When x is less than or equal to 1, so there we're talking about the left-hand side of 1, it's defined by x squared. And for values greater than 1, it's defined by 2x. So it's defined by two different functions on either side. Now, we're talking specifically about the behavior at 1. What we're really talking about in this problem is continuity at a point. We're talking about the continuity at x equals 1. We're really trying to determine, is this function continuous there? Remember, for continuity at a point, and we can use specifically at x equals 1 here, we need three things. We need, first of all, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, we need that to exist. We need, for the second part, we need f of 1 to exist. And then we need those two things to be equal. We need the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x to equal f of 1. Oops, f of 1. So we just need to check our piecewise function at x equals 1. So we can treat this like a checklist just like we were doing earlier. The first thing I'm going to look at is the limit. Does the limit exist? This one's perhaps a little bit tricky because we're working with a piecewise function. For this particular piecewise function, it's defined differently on the left-hand side of 1 for values that are less than or equal to 1 than it is on the right-hand side of 1 for values greater than 1. So I am going to have to break this down into the two one-sided limits. I'm going to have to say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x. Let's start there. So if I say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, well, uh, if I'm talking about numbers on the left-hand side of 1, I'm talking about numbers which are less than or equal to 1. So that means I'm going to take x equals 1, and I'm going to plug it into x squared. So we'll say 1 squared, that is 1. So my left-hand limit, that's 1. On the right-hand side, limit as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side of our function f of x. And I'm going to look back at how my function was defined. If we're on the right-hand side of 1, we're talking about values that are greater than 1. So that means I'm going to take 1 and plug it into 2x. Here, 2 times 1 gives me 2. So what I have now, the left-hand limit is positive 1. 
the right hand limit is positive 2. So that means that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist. Those two things are not equal, so my limit does not exist. I failed property number 1. So what this tells me is that this function is discontinuous. It's discontinuous at x equals 1. If I had worked my way through the checklist and I'd found number 1 was true and number 2 was true and number 3 was true, then I could say it was continuous at x equals 1. But because it failed that first, uh, that first criteria, because the limit does not exist, it is discontinuous at x equals 1. But lucky for us, that's the only place where this function is continuous. Remember way back in the beginning of the problem, I said, hey, x squared, that's a polynomial. So it is continuous everywhere. And 2x, that's a polynomial. So it is continuous everywhere. So it's continuous. What I've really done is I've said it's continuous everywhere on the left-hand side of 1 because there was defined by y equals x squared, which was a polynomial. And it's continuous everywhere on the right-hand side of 1 because it's defined by y equals 2x, which is a polynomial. We just had to figure out what was going on right here where we're changing. And we said it's not continuous there because the limit does not exist.